Okay, folks, we're going to try to do this like the Oscars or the Grammys, where you have two presenters vying for attention, <laughs> trying to read off the same teleprompter and missing all their cues. But talk about a tough gig. How do you introduce Tony Abbott to a bunch of plant people in Raleigh, North Carolina? Or anywhere else. Surely this is a situation for which the hackneyed phrase, the man needs no introduction, but was invented. You're here because you already know him, and you're eager to hear him, not us. You already know that Tony uh, and his wife, uh, Mich wonderful and talented like wife Michelle, uh, intrepidly founded Plant the Lights Nursery 25 years ago, that it's grown into an international beacon on the Plantsman's Hill, and, and that it's uh, a, a, a great international destination nursery with an endlessly growing collection of uh, heirloom plants, uh, new plants, wild plants, that it has amazing research gardens and a, a robust scientific research program. And please join us after the talk and before the auction to cut the cake celebrating Plant Delight's 25th anniversary. And you know that Tony is our, our own Indiana Jones, uh, rescuing horticultural treasures across the globe. And you know that he's a regular donor of fascinating plants to our Good NARGS time. auction, as well as our intrepid auctioneer. And if you are not signed up to receive his Facebook postings for Plant Delights, then you are foregoing an enriching <coughs> educational opportunity. And you know that he's an enthralling writer, uh, lecturer, horticultural raconteur, author of uh, So You Think You Want to Start a Nursery, as well as um, creator of a wonderful, yes, titillating catalog and web page, <laughs> uh, a fountain of, uh, of a puns and wordplay. Isn't that enough? We could drone on and on. Yes, that's enough. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> and now on our stage this morning, Speaking of his Horto adventures in the Balkans, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the legend, our own Green Lanterns. <laughs> Thank you, George and Gracie. That does bring back old memories for showing our age this morning. Uh, why don't we go ahead and the lights. Do I have some of the lights up here? And hopefully somebody has some others. I apologize for the weather. We really didn't see this one coming, but uh, uh, a little sort of snuck up on us. Uh, a little background on this trip. Uh, this is a little different trip for me. I normally do at least a couple years planning before I head anywhere. And this one uh, really sort of popped up out of the blue. I was talking to my good friend Tom Mitchell over in England. Uh, right after Michelle had passed away. And he said, well, if you need to get out of the house, why don't you come join me in the Balkans in a few weeks? <laughs> and I said, well, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I got off email and I said, well, is that really crazy? You know, what the hell? You know, let's, it probably wouldn't do me good to get out of the house. So we headed over to England, first of, uh, first of June. And of course, there's, this is where we wound up, Bosnia, Croatia, Montenegro and Slovenia, all those great vacation spots I'm sure you should uh, uh, visit. Uh, so our first day, actually, we flew over and picked up Tom in England, or Tom picked us up. For those that have not met Tom, he's one of the most fascinating people I've ever met. He is, uh, he basically burned out on a career as an investment banker with J.P. Morgan Chase, making insane amounts of money. Uh, decided he wanted to find a way to lose it all very quickly and begin to open a nursery <laughs> in England. Now, unlike the way most people open nurseries, you start very slow. And Tom decided he wanted to go explore the entire world for five years before he sold the first plant. So he basically has done that and burned through all of his money. Uh, before he got into investment banking, actually, it turns out he was a... Uh, a PhD plant biologist, an evolutionary biologist. So his background is actually in plants. So he's sort of come back to something that he will uh, uh, be poor at. Uh, I called my friend Hans Hansen here in the US, is a, a well-known plant breeder up in Michigan. And I said, well, you know, I know you're working with hellebores. If you'd like to come, 
come on. So he agreed to, to join us, and uh, three of us uh, uh, headed over to the Balkans. First stop again was at Tom's Nursery, and this is, uh, this is basically what happens when a plantsman collects but doesn't really do anything with the plants. They sit there and lots of great seedlings. The house here, stuff's about this tall. Those are not the plants. Those are the weeds over top of the plants. There used to be incredible things. And we did dig through and find some, uh, some really neat treasures. But the problem is he collects faster than he processes, which is true of a lot of collectors. We did find some amazing things here. He's showing us his, uh, his cage specimen right here, which is the very rare Aeschylus wangii that he was able to uh, uh, acquire seed of. Aeschylus wangii, wangii is a buckeye with seeds about that large, so the size of a good size orange. Uh, really quite amazing, and one of those things I understand you don't want to shake the tree to get the seed. <laughs> not very pretty. Found a couple of amazing things in his nursery amongst the weeds. This is a wonderful golden convalaria, golden jubilee, and we got a piece of that to compare with the one that's here in the country, golden slippers. And also, I was blown away by this gold leaf polygonatum odoratum mm -hmm. that Tom had actually found in the Loire Valley of France. And so he did uh, send us back with a piece of that. For years, I have been wanting a solid gold, solid seal, so uh, we've now got that. But the plant that blew me away was this. That is the, the, the lustful Helleborus multifidus, multifidus herzegovinus, which I had seen in years. I had never seen one that narrow. And Tom said, oh, we'll be seeing tons of that. I'm ready. I'm ready. We'll just head out. So we did. Off we go after one night in England the next day to the Balkans. Uh, Balkans, you know, were carved out, the, the countries where Vesting are carved out when Yugoslavia sort of imploded a few years ago. So we're going to land here in Zagreb. We're going to loop up here through Slovenia, back down into Croatia, coming right across here, spend the night, and back down into Bosnia, Herzegovina, actually down here, below Sarajevo, into Montenegro, and then around and back and flying out of here. So it's a, we, we covered a lot of ground. I forget how many thousands of miles. Tom insisted that he drive because I drive too slow for Tom. <laughs> Tom definitely drives fast. I think he told us he had, I forget, 30 speeding tickets in the Balkans already. And he just, doesn't, that just doesn't affect him. We, we, we got stopped once on this trip. No officer, I'll never do it again. <laughs> Now, it's very interesting, some of the, I'm not going to get a lot into there, but it's very interesting, this map actually shows who lives where. So Bosnia and Herzegovina were the area that really kept getting the crap bombed out of them because uh, the Serbs really wanted the areas. you got Serbs over here, and you got Serbs in Serbia. And then you got all the Muslims in here. Well, they're trying to bomb the Muslims out. So all the Bos Muslims now have sort of hightailed it uh, out of the area. So it's really a fascinating area, but... Uh, an area that's really undergone a, a lot of transition and uh, since they stopped fighting in the area. Now, what was very interesting to me, I assume all of this was EU countries, because the beauty of the EU is you can ship plants back and forth to any EU country without any permits or anything. Well, it's not. It turns out the only EU country is Slovenia. All the rest of them would like to be EU, but they haven't been nice enough and smart enough to get accepted into the EU yet, but they're so that posed a lot of different things. So you still had to go through the border checks and get inspected every time you go from one country to the next. We landed in uh, Zagreb, which I had heard of for those that are old enough. We used to grow back in the 80s a Coreopsis Zagreb that was uh, selected there. So here we are landing at the airport, picking up our rental car, walking out of the airport. I was fascinated with this billboard. How American is this? I mean, first of all, you know, if you want to go find good credit, go to this bank. Well, A, they're using Sharon Stone uh, type figure here to publicize it. Find us on Facebook? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what kind of impact is that? That's, that's pretty amazing to find. So we headed out to find our vehicle, this incredible Peugeot van. I mean, this is like the, yeah. a serious alpha male vehicle if there's ever been. <laughs> and we're loving this because there's three of us. I mean, we are just ready to go. So we loaded up headed out, got just a little bit down the road, and we heard this crunch. Uh-oh, 
This was obviously not as aggressive a vehicle as ours was, and turning out, it, uh, uh, Tom did not realize uh, that it, it was that close, and so we had to obviously spend a little more time at the airport than we would have liked. But eventually we did head out, uh, heading to the west, to our hotel for the evening uh, in uh, Samobor, which many of you may recognize from Geranium Samobor, a wonderful little hotel. Unfortunately, we were on the third floor and there were no elevators. And uh, when you have to pack for collection trips, that's a lot of lugging uh, up and down. But a, a wonderful little place. If, I, if you do go there, I highly recommend the bathrooms. I have traveled around the world. I have never been in a bathroom like this. This is a bathroom that could seat 12 for a formal dinner while six people were bathing. It was unbelievable. Phenomenal for washing plants. Absolutely. <laughs> so from here, especially for those that have never tried it, there is nothing better to bear root, wash bare root plants than a bidet. It is incredible. <laughs> I'm going to put one in all of our greenhouses. They are marvelous. So from here, we headed north up into Slovenia. Our first stop, we pulled up at this little gas station. Tom says, well, this is a site I know. Walk across the road. We walked in off the road into this. Absolutely amazing. First thing we see, Epimedium alpinum. Huge swaths of Epimedium. And then right here in the back, hellebores. <coughs> uh, hellebores after rubens growing right here together. Look at this. And here is a serum, a serum European growing in with the uh, epimedium. The great thing about going in the wild is, is being able to see these plants that you know. And it's like, oh, there you are. You're home. This is great. You know, it's like they've invited you into their home. It's a little close-up of the hellebores. It was so neat. Now, we were there in June, first of June. So no hellebore flowers, which I'm more interested in. Species hellebore flowers just don't do much for me. Okay, they're small, a lot of them are green. They're just, compared to where the hybrids are now, I just can't get excited. What I get excited about is the foliage, like I showed you earlier. And then, of course, the opportunity to just see these in the wild. Uh, hellebore's niger, was it the same place they're going right side by side? That was fascinating. Because niger is sort of weird on the hellebore family tree. It's sort of off on its own because it flowers much earlier. But to see them both flowering, all I mean, both growing right there together was incredible. And then also, went back up with that, Lily of the Valley, which we all know, uh, growing there in the wild. Uh, just, just amazing. Here we are, again, I haven't moved a foot in all these shots. This is uh, uh, the Solomon seal over there, Polygonatum uh, multiflorum, with cyclamen. Looks like our native of serums, doesn't it? I'm, I'm walking in, I'm like, damn, you know, here's a serum minor. But that's a cyclamen purpurescence and periwinkle, vinca major, which we certainly all know, growing right there in the wild. Really just amazing. And just a, a, a shot as we walked around through the woods, incredible stuff, the ferns that dropped through Felix Moss. But the thing that was amazing to me is blue fescue, which I've grown for years. Here it is growing in the woods with ferns. And hellebores. That's just, I just didn't see that one. That was really crazy. It just everywhere you looked was just this incredible combination of plants. Here are the willow leaf gentian, Gentiana sclepidae, and one of my favorite ferns, which I've, I've got a whole new appreciation for, is the uh, Asplenium scolopendrium. Uh, just an amazing plant. We've actually been growing this in the garden. Once I realized years ago, it needs moist soils, not dry, moist and a high pH, so we keep ours up around 6.5, absolutely incredible plant. It just, now I'm, ferns are the other thing, I, I just absolutely am, am smitten with ferns. So to see so many, this is uh, a little Asplenium trichomenes, a very common fern, but generally where it's from is from really uh, areas that don't get any heat, so we were trying to focus on areas where we did get summer heat. We were able to find spores on a lot of these. Uh, the lovely Polypodium vulgare, a very common rock fern, again growing there with the, uh, uh, this is this little plant with the round leaves is uh, Daphne Missourium, which was really, I mean it was just, it was just everywhere you go, it's like wow, I know this plant, I know this plant, this is, this is really cool. <coughs> Ballisticum sativum, a fern that we grow. In the wild, some of these clumps had fronds four foot long. It's incredible, and I think a lot of potential for growing new forms of that uh, in the U.S. This beautiful Aconitum, Aconitum uh, 
Lycontium uh, growing there in the shade with the hellebores. We were able to get a piece of this back and it's doing very well. Uh, white flowers, but again a woodland, uh, another woodland aconitum. plant that blew me away at the stop was Salvia glutinosa. The uh, distop sedge had no idea it grew in the woods with hellebores and ferns. This is a yellow flowering woodland uh, salvia, very similar to out of the group of Salvia koyami, which we know. And we would see this everywhere on the trip, and we were able to get a couple of clones of that back. From here, we, we went further north up to 1,250 feet uh, to a site that Tom had been before. First thing that greeted us was this incredible Aruncus, Aruncus dioicus, in full bloom, six foot tall, just amazing. Growing underneath it was a plant that just, that was a highlight of my trail. This, this is Ruscus. I collect Ruscus. I love Ruscus. I'm fascinated. Although I've always thought, you know, most of them are sort of marginally hardy. We're sort of at the northern end. This is Ruscus hypoglossum. So I'm digging a plant of this, and I'm thinking, well, damn. You know, up above this is, is beech trees. This has got to be pretty cool. It wasn't until I got back and looked where we were. We were at 46 latitude. Do you know where 46 latitude is? That is north of Minneapolis. We are 50% higher than Minneapolis, which is at 815 feet. We're at 1,250 feet. This has got to be a zone 4 Ruscus. I had no idea. This completely blew me away. Just, just did not realize that kind of hardiness existed in the genus Ruscus. And then our next stop, so excited, found the wonderful geranium phaeum, which uh, is a geranium that grows very well for us. And that's as patterned as well as the uh, famous one that Elizabeth Stragman named Samovor. So that actually came back with us, and that is in the garden, doing very, very well. The uh, next day, we, after we got up, we headed south. Now we're heading down uh, toward Bosnia. Our first stop was a low elevation, about 700 foot. We stopped, pulled up right in front of this guy's house and right in front of his vegetable garden. And see, there's his garden. So here we are looking for any patch of woods. That's where the cool stuff is. So there we are just walking in to this incredible clone of a serum europeum. See, a serum europeum pretty much sucks for us because what we got to trade is mostly high elevation stuff. Well, there's plenty of low elevation collections that we need to make. And uh, we did make some of this. Hopefully this one will survive. It's, it's had a rough uh, time back. But just incredible the diversity in that. Loads of Hellebores niger in here, again, with Hellebores after Rubens. Uh, from here, off we went, again, continuing further south, but we're heading back up in elevation. This is the countryside. Is that beautiful or what? What are those silver trees? I mean, who would, uh, probably a, some sort of a cypress. We wow. did not get down there to see, but I'm very <clears> over. <throat> that would be my guess, is some sort of a cypress. It's, it's a, just a beautiful agrarian area, but a very, very cold. Uh, area. There we are uh, at a stop that Tom had spotted uh, earlier and easy to find because of the little memorial to the plants he's taken and killed. <laughs> <laughs> and here we found more Ruscus. And the cool thing about this site, Ruscus is male and female plant. And where the other site we found no fruit, we were able to find fruit here, so we're able to actually make male and female collections. So, and this site was, even though it was for a little bit further south, was 1,600 feet, so it was even higher elevation than we found before. Also here, a plant I love is the uh, wonderful Lamium orvala. If you haven't grown this, it is amazing. It prefers to be in a cooler climate, but hopefully uh, material from this uh, site, if it survives, will be a little more uh, a heat tolerant. A beautiful Lamium, it's a clumping Lamium about two and a half, three feet tall that is just extraordinary. Also here, Paris. Paris in the wild, uh, just uh, amazing. Paris quadrifolia, I've actually grown this, but just incredible patches. This is obviously first cousin to trilliums. The pulmonarias, oh my God. We had found pulmonarias the first day, but this pulmonary leaf was incredible. 20 inches long, unbelievable. We've never seen one like this. Uh, that's Hans' hand, which is, he's got a big hand. He actually brought this back, and I talked to him last week. It's doing incredible. He said it's even bigger than it was in the wild. So he's going to try to breed with this. Nobody's brought back any new pulmonarias in years. Everything in the trade is just the same genetics remixed. Uh, 
uh, heading on. This is just sort of what a site would look like. We would stop side of the road, and there's just looking up in the woods. This is all Hellebores niger. And then also at the same site, uh, more uh, Hellebores atra rubens. Now just look at the difference. I'm fascinated by genetic diversity. That just that just is amazing to me. So here is two forms of niger. More typical what we see is this one almost to me starts looking like, well, maybe it's got something else in there. Well, I walked on a little further and found that. Now, Dick, Judith, I'll let you, uh, to me, I got time out of that. I said, does that not look like a hybrid to you? I think some Antirubens and Niger have been, been doing a little something there. That's just, uh, and, and we didn't find, other than this site, we did not find anything else that looked like an integrate on the whole trip. So pretty excited about that. And I did bring a division of this back. So fingers crossed we'll know when it flowers. Tom said he's been there in bloom and never saw any uh, uh, hybrids, but this was a brand new site to him. As we continue to head south, we, again, the, 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 the habitat changes as we go through. The Balkans are a series of uplifts uh, from the things crunching together. So you've got all of these Weird endemics. There's over a thousand endemic plants just to the Balkans, because each between each little mountain was so isolated that plants evolved differently. Uh, the one thing we hate are these guys. Uh, these, I mean, they just mow down all the cool plants on the roads, and then you actually have to get out of your car to see stuff. It really sucks. And every country I've been to, they have it. Whether they do it by sickles or or like this, so always try to get ahead of these guys. Uh, so here we are at a uh, just a roadside stop and uh, walking through. We did find here, this is Helleborus multifidus. Uh, this is the first of the uh, multifidus that we have found. The multifidus is generally a little narrow, although there are some other things that are narrow as well. Normally they grew in shade. This site is in full baking sun. And they were doing absolutely fine. The only shade they get is the grass is coming up above them in the summer. Also here the lovely salvia pretensis, which is fabulous in this area. So we sort of look at associations. When you see plants that you're already able to grow, you know you're probably going to be able to grow other things from the site. Um, as we continue now, now right, I, did, I mentioned that Tom had not been to these couple sites. The reason is we're driving down our main road and Tom starts this conversation about American politics. So he finds fashion. So we're engaged, in, and of course, the next thing you know, we've missed our exit. So Tom decides, even though we can't read any of the road signs, that he can find a way back to our main road. <laughs> Not true. So we went on a five and a half hour detour. <laughs> so we're thinking, you know, he said, well, you know, we've lost our road, but I think I can make it back over the mountain. And so we started heading up this road that had no signs on it, so we're getting higher and higher. So we're, we're now up about 3,500 feet. And the cool thing was we're starting to see plants that were already, we missed flowers earlier because we're getting a higher elevation. This little anemone narcissifolia, narcissiflora. We're seeing more of the uh, uh, lamium orvala, this incredible color form. Oh my God, incredible. So we're up, again, uh, 3,500 feet now. So we're just, it's just great. And we even found a scopolia, which is a really cool scopolia carnolica, weird woodland member of the Solanaceae family. Tom had never seen it in the wild. So we're about 3,500 feet now, all excited and, and continuing. I mean, it's just an amazing area. Clematis alpina, oh my God, that was just a just, just incredible moment hanging off the walls right with Clematis okra luca. Another plant that we can grow just barely because it's getting up higher elevation. And then I about Ooh. fell out of the van with this. <laughs> that, that is sweet Sicily, which I've heard of and I've never grown. Miris odorata. Is that just incredible? It looks like this giant three-foot-tall fern growing 3,800 feet elevation in the middle of nowhere. It was, it was incredible. We tried to bring this back. It didn't. So, I, But I think I can get seed on that. Just... I mean, that in the Woodland Garden would be a stunner. Right after this, the road turned to dirt and then ended. <laughs> so another hour and a half back down the mountain to try to again find our road. 
Eventually, we did reconnect with the highway, and we where we stopped for lunch at 5:30. <laughs> we were really, really lost. Um, we finally made it back down to the coastal town of uh, Buzet or Buzet. Maybe that's where the slogan "Lose It or Lose It" came from. Lose It or Lose It came from. But this little town is right on the border of Slovenia and Italy. So here we are. We're very low now uh, because you're seeing pomegranates and tracheocarpus all around the hotel. We pulled into this amazing little hotel. Oh my God, the Bella Baraccia. If you go to uh, uh, Croatia, you got to go to the Bella Baraccia. They specialize in blue and black truffles. When we were there, and I mean everything had truffles on it. They said, oh, you must come back in the fall. That's when we have the white truffles. The very rare white truffles. Uh, Tom was very tempted to go back. I found that truffles add maybe some flavor, but they add a lot of expense to your meal. <laughs> Not a lot of parking places around the Bella Barossa. So it's beautiful. This is where we had dinner that evening out and we're looking at the valley. Oh, it's just it's absolutely incredible. This is the parking lot behind the hotel. <laughs> Unbelievable. It took us 40 minutes to get our vehicle out in the morning because they <laughs> wedge everything in. You have about an inch between it. So you've got to climb over somebody's vehicle, down through the window to get in. And then if you're lucky, uh, to just squeeze right around these narrow alleys that you, you see so much in the old, a uh, lot of the European movies. So we're heading now just north of our hotel, north of Buzet, still in Croatia. We got up to about 1,600 feet, and what do we find? Smoke trees everywhere. This was so cool to see smoke trees in the wild. And I mean every smoke tree under the sun, every form. This was a 1 12 feet tall with almost reddish flowers. This one excited me. This is a ground cover smoke tree. This is 1 foot tall. Oh my God, it was incredible. Flowering with hellebore. I mean, hellebores are growing all among the smoke tree. This is too weird. This clone, actually, I don't know if you can see it there, had already started to, uh, already started break, took cuttings, and actually have one of these rooted. And so if it comes through, we're going to be able to get this thing out and get it propagated. Because it was amazing. It was like eight to ten foot wide and one foot tall in full flower. I think a ground cover smoke tree would be pretty wild. And there's just an example looking out. Look at it. And here's a six footer, there's a two footer. To me, nursery guys should go over here about a month later and take cuttings. It would be incredible what you could come back with in, in terms of smoke trees. Growing all amongst them, we found our first peonies. A peony officinalis just finished, seed not quite ripe, but growing here amongst the rocks. This beautiful root, this is a root, I don't know what species, and unfortunately the seed were not ripe, but what an incredible, almost a, a thread-like leaf. And again, there's more of the blue fescue, but look at the variation. It's not all blue, it goes from blue to green. And all amongst that was incredible numbers of orchids, uh, gymnosperma, uh, just incredibly little ground orchids, just like we saw in Crete, growing everywhere. Uh, hellebores as well. This is, and you're going to have to bear with me because we saw a lot of hellebores. I think this is Torquatus. Let me get to my. We saw so many hellebores. Multifidus istiracus. Sorry, I was wrong on that one. Uh, first time we'd seen that. And again, more of the wonderful salvia pretensis. It was so neat to see these salvias. And right beside that was salvia verticillata, which many of us also grow. So a completely different species growing there together. We're now going back up. We're up at about 2,600 feet at this point. Look at this grass. Is that not the coolest ornamental grass? Oh, my God. I love that. That is a stipa. And I wish I could have brought that back. That, that just... That's just too cool. And the little short thing, only about uh, 20 uh, inches tall. I love this right nearby the stipe. It's incredible butterfly photo. Uh, uh, John Dole told me what kind it is, a little uh, white something or other. But, but isn't that just, <laughs> yeah, I know you figured that out. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. So, that was so neat. And then we went around the corner and hit this. Oh my God. It's just, it's things like this you live for. Uh, starting out, cyclamen rapandum, hellebores nobilis, the uh, 
little Asplenium trichomenes, uh, there's a Serum europeum, and the hellebore, all right there together in one photo. I mean, that's a, that's a perfect garden pairing, and here it is in the wild. It's so amazing. And just this whole bank was just covered in ferns. This is a little Asplenium onocturus there with what I think is Ethereum felix femina and uh, uh, Sedum hispanicum, all right there together. It's just, just amazing. Again, this whole strip, this is just a roadside cut with just ferns. This, I think this is also Ethereum Felix Feminine. On down the road, I'm so excited. Here's a plant I've wanted to grow for years, gas plant. This is Dictaminus albus, which will not take our summers. I think we've got some. If, if they survive our trip, it should do, because these are from very hot areas. These are the plants that actually excrete gas, and you can actually put a lighter near them, and it'll shoot out a flame. It's, it's really cool. It's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. A lot of euphorbias in this area. Uh, euphorbia, maybe an epithomoides, polychroma type. Uh, geranium sanguinium, another plant we know we can grow. So, so that's what gets us excited when you start seeing all these plants are already growing. You're thinking, well, maybe everything else here should grow. Finally, a flower on the peony of fish and alice. Oh, my God, to see those uh, in bloom was just amazing. Growing in a full sun meadow as well as in shade with hellebores. Really fascinating to see. Uh, more Solomon seal. This is uh, uh, Polygonatum odoratum, which is two species. There's odoratum and multiflorum. And then just incredible pulmonaries, just every shape and size uh, under the sun. And just, again, this is a little thelipterous, a fern. And then this wonderful patch of Lilium bulbifera. Oh, my God, incredible. In full flower, just popping up along the roadside. Uh, and this one forms the little uh, leaf bulbils. So I, we did get this. Uh, hands brought that back, and that one should do very well for us. More of the little orchids. This is orchid uh, simia. And then continuing on down to a, a much further site, this, this wonderful meadow. So here we are. The thing that amazed me about the meadow is all the conifers in there are just weather beat. Must be a very windy area. But they genetically dwarf. Uh, you, could, you could go in as a nurseryman and just make incredible selections. Every shape and form of a little contorted dwarf was just unimaginable for a conifer person. I, I definitely. That would be a place to go back probably in July with clippers in hand. Uh, at the middle of the fields with the junipers are gentians. These incredible giant gentians. Would love to see those in flower. Do not know what species. Uh, we're getting more hellebores. And this would be, this is, uh, we saw a lot of this. This is a hybrid swarm of hellebores multifidus and hellebores torquatus. I don't care if that ever flowers. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. I love that for texture. And then continuing on, this is another area. Then we're stopping at some stops at Tom New. Very similar area. We started in the lowlands out in the sun. And we're seeing more of the hybrids here. We're starting out going, just the lawn was time. The whole field. So everywhere you walked, just this incredible fragrance wafted around you. And then the hellebores growing in amongst the time were just incredible. As we continue to walk, once we got up in the trees, entire acres of lily of the valley. Can you imagine what that would be like in flower? Oh my God. Once we hit the lily of the valley, the Torquatus uh, multifidus hybrid stopped. You did not see any more of those. And you walked about 50 feet into here, and then you got into Niger. Totally separate into where they grow. This was always growing in deep shade. Which is interesting because where I found it grows best in the garden is in full sun. So this was quite fascinating. Growing the orchids, I mean, the, uh, this is a little toy blade orchid growing right along with the hellebores. And this was uh, our next to the last stop for the day. This is a site Tom had been to before. It was incredible. This area is it would open up just full of those same hybrid hellebores. Look at the leaves on these. The diversity of foliage is just incredible. Look at that. I actually have a division off this one. Oh my goodness. Again, just totally different than what I'd ever seen as hellebores. This is all within a two foot area, all three of these photos. And yet, look at the diversity. You, you could go absolutely crazy here. Look at that. It's the same hybrid. 
That's just, I mean, you're just like, oh my God, and then you dig a piece off this one, and oh my God, we need a piece off this one, and you just finally just give up. It, it's just, it's just crazy. Growing right beside it, this incredible patch of iris graminia, the grass iris. Oh my God, the patch was four foot across, in full bloom, with a lovely grape soda fragrance. Oh, to die for. Uh, we did get a division of this. We've actually grown this in the garden for years, and it does very well uh, here. This one, I believe, had a little wider flower than what we're used to. And a plant I grew at home, I was so thrilled to see this because it actually has a darker, darker lip than the one in the tray. This is a plant called Bastard Balm. One of the great names in horticulture. <laughs> this is Melitis, Melitis melissifolium. And normally what we had seen on the trip the, the, uh, the lip was a light pink, and this one was just dark purple. So we did get a division off this. Fingers crossed that it uh, comes through. And then our final stop of the day, all these last few were all very close together, was a, a top stop that, uh, but see, Tom collects seed. That's how he makes a lot of his money to pay for his trips, is hellebore seed. Well, we have, up till the last site, this one I just showed you, we had not found any seed. We had been scum. It just, a lot of times they had a late spring freeze and it aborts all the seed. The last stop was the first one we found seed, and then we arrived at this one, which also had seed. Uh, this guy's like, you're doing what? <laughs> now, he couldn't speak, but I, I, I realized later what the dog was trying to tell us. He was trying to tell us, there are bombs here. <laughs> And there was. That was the first bomb I'd seen, and right near that, I found my first landmine. Ooh. I was like, Tom, what does a landmine look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I found one over here. And Tom has been in the nursery business long enough to lose his mind, so he came over and threw a rock at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do not recommend that. <laughs> now, fortunately, this was a dud, but that's just not a good thing to do. Well, there was here also some good hellebores, same, same type hybrid, again, that multifidus uh, torquatus hybrid. Uh, from here, again, uh, dinner, and then our next day, we're still in Croatia, we're right on the border, we're heading into Bosnia. This was our first stop uh, in Bosnia for the morning, this wide open field side of the road. Now you look at it, you think, was there anything interesting there? Well, not as much as some places, but here's the hellebores and growing all among bracken fern. If we had been there a month later, we would never have seen a hellebore because the bracken absolutely would cover everything. Right on the rocks, I found this incredible fern that I also had found in Crete, and it is a bitch to grow. This is Ceterac officinarum. This is one of the full sun rock ferns. Only grows an inch tall. but just cute as a button. The field is covered with this. Acres of this. Colchicum. Oh my God, absolutely incredible. This is a, a plant I would love to see in bloom. This is Colchicum autumnale. And just again, hundreds of thousands. Can you imagine what that field would be like? And then right there in that same rock crack with the ferns, this is a couple of little sedum, sedum hispanicum. Uh, really growing everywhere. So we drove further into Bosnia. It was fascinating to watch all the bombed out houses. And there are bombed out houses everywhere. Well, they were building all the new houses right beside the bombed out ones. They never tore anything down. Now, whether this is like for memories or, or what it is, to me, okay, let's get rid of this one. Uh, unless you're like building a ruined garden, I guess it would be pretty nice, but I didn't see any of those. But amazing area that tries to recover from all the, uh, all the shelling. Memorials all over the place to uh, all the people that got killed in the, uh, in the conflict. So we're driving along the road, I said, Tom, what, what are these things? Because we would drive along these fields, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, somebody sunk the ground. He's like, those are dough limes. These are where you had a limestone sink. And I said, can we stop at one of these? <laughs> He's like, sure. So we, we get out, and we walk in there. It was incredible. Incredible. Anemone nemorosa, a plant that many of us grow, a lovely spring ephemeral, just big masses of... Uh, the hellebores. Oh my God. That, that was, this is, um, let me see where we are here. This is a fine leafed hellebores porquatus, uh, which again, I, I don't care for flowers. I don't need a flower on this. 
Also, more Iris graminea, but the cool thing is Iris graminea is growing right beside Iris variegata, which is another one that grows very well for us, a little uh, uh, medium dwarf uh, Iris. To see both of those in the wild was incredible. And then, oh my God, a fat fell over. This is a golden leaf bastard bomb. <laughs> oh my God. That did come back with me, but unfortunately due to a mishap, it did not survive. And I'm, I'm upset because that's, that's, a, that's a once in a lifetime. I mean, this thing even was vigorous, but uh, at least I've got the photo. Uh, just again, as we continued on into Bosnia, more of these fields. You see the little conifers? See how worn they are? Just, just really amazing things that have uh, been dwarfed through the years. Growing around it, this little gentianopsis. This is like first cousin to a gentian, except it's an annual, so it got some extra letters. Uh, but, but just the color of intense blue is incredible. And then more of the hellebores, and this is uh, also a uh, more torquatus. I, I've gained a whole new appreciation for torquatus. I mean, what an amazing plant. Just look at the variation. Wow. Wow. That, that's incredible. Uh, growing also out there in the field was Primula, Primula virus. Uh, we did get some of this. I think this should grow from, from where we were. And then into this field, I mean, we followed these guys for a while. They, they were like, you're doing what in our field? You're messing with our food? Uh, more colchicums. Again, just acres and acres of autumn colchicums. And then gentian sagittalis. Oh, my God. First became acquainted with this back here at the Arboretum. Used to have a nice patch in front of the laugh house. Only about six inches tall, bright yellow, and insanely fragrant. And it was just in full bloom. Oh, uh, and just, just like walking through this magical meadow to see that in flower. Oh, incredible. Digitalis, growing right there in the fields. This is, uh, I believe, Grandiflora. More of those gentians. I, I, I'd love to see these in flower. We were just a bit too late. And then just looking, this is in the same woodland area, just walking through there. Look at the Torquatus there. Incredible. And just, again, all between little orchids. Look at the difference. Just an amazing thing. And so heading, we're continuing west now uh, through Bosnia, and we're now starting to head south uh, for the evening. And we've got a long drive now. We've got a six-hour drive, so we had to fly. So we went over the top of the mountain, and we promised we wouldn't stop. Well, Tom had a weak moment at the top. So here we are at about 4,800 feet. It's cold as a mother up here. Just, I mean, this is just starting spring. This is a wonderful aconitum. Uh, Al Camilla, which I'd love to have found a heat tolerant one of those. This isn't it. Uh, Dactyloriza orchids, uh, which I've tried to grow, no luck. This incredible euphorbia, which again, I think must be polychroma because I cannot grow that here. and I certainly couldn't grow it from that elevation. Veratrum nigra, oh my gosh. Three to four foot clumps of veratrum. Oh, I'd kill if I could grow this, but not from this elevation. And this was some uh, high elevation form of Helleborus odorus. So again, we found five Hellebore species on the trip. Mardigan lilies. Oh my goodness. Hans was all excited because he breeds Mardigans. Normally they would have green stems. This one, I mean, he says, when I would agree, you can tell the flower is going to be red because it has so much anthocyanin pigment uh, in the stems. We were supposed to head down to this town for the night called Treb and Jay. Well, Tom doesn't mind driving until 1 in the morning. I, on the other hand, do not like riding till 1 in the morning, especially when we don't know where we're going. And Tom had made about three shortcuts, which turned out not to work. <laughs> we had to backtrack. So for the night, we, I said, Tom, you know, here's a town on the way. Let's just stop here. A little town called Mostar. So we did. It turned out it was an incredible hotel. It was a five-star hotel in the middle of nowhere. I, I did not understand. It's an amazing hotel. Except for the bathroom. <laughs> if you could have taken the bathroom from earlier in the trip and put it on this one, we'd have been good. The bathroom, the, the water did not run in the shower, but it ran without stopping in the toilet. <laughs> they had a little issue right here. So we're in there and we're cleaning our plants and we got this little balcony. And so we're working this about almost 11 o'clock at night. And all of a sudden, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Who the hell put a mosque out in the back of the hotel window? They're ringing 
ringing bells and chanting for damn near an hour. That's just not the way you get people to come to your religion. Jesus, turn the volume down a little bit. Man, thank God I had to work till one anyway, but because that would have made sleeping impossible. Mostar was an amazing area, and it, that is an amazing hotel if you ever get there. From there, the next day, we're going back up in elevation because Mostar was low. That's another zone, probably 8B. It was very low because we're getting down toward the coast. We're heading back up now. This is a little stop about 900 feet elevation in the morning. Incredible poppies and this amazing shrubby, semi-vining shrubby clematis. Oh, my goodness. We think it's probably clematis flammula. I did bring a little piece back. It flushed out, but I don't know if it's going to make it through the winter or not. Fingers crossed, because that was a beauty. Little campanulist relative. This stuff's growing right on the rocks. This incredible little, I don't know what the hell it is, like a hyracium, something similar to that, but I want that. that, that is a, <laughs> that's pretty hot. I, I like that. And then up we are. We Our first stop for the day was around uh, 2,000, no, 2,300 foot elevation in this horrible rocky area. And you look at that and you think, well, what in the world could possibly grow here? Well, more dictaminous. And this is a hot area. So I think our dictaminous from here have a really, really good chance. There's a close-up. I mean, just amazing. About a three-foot-tall spike. Uh, maples. These incredible dwarf Mediterranean maples. Uh, just amazing. Could be, could be Acer Sempervirens. Don't know for sure. This is a dwarf Quercus cerus. This is a ground cover form of the turkey oak. This thing never got more than two foot tall mat, and it was probably 15, 20 foot wide. Wouldn't that be cool, a ground cover oak? Oh my God. Found our first arum of the trip, arum nigrum, uh, not in flower, a bear to dig. These things, the, the tubers are about a foot deep in rock. So, I mean, it, you have to want one really bad to get one out of here. These incredible things that I thought were fennel, but now I've realized they're adamanthae, which is a just funny little fuzzy thing, but the texture. There were two different species growing in here, this one and this, which are just amazing. They're about two foot tall and about two foot wide. Just incredible. I have to get these. Uh, my plants did not survive, but... I've got to go back and get these because they would be incredible garden plants for us. Iris pallida growing right there in the rocks. An iris that grows very well for us, more of the little uh, gentians, I mean the little uh, genistus. Uh, Gladiolus italicus, a plant that does very well for us. So again, we're seeing that association of plants we grow. Acanthus, I love acanthus. To see it in the wild was so cool. This is acanthus. Uh, Hungaricus volcanicus. Surprise. We were about two weeks before full bloom, which would have been great to look for flower color. But really, really just amazing. This is a particularly nice five leaf, five lobe uh, one that I did get a little piece off of and then happened to stumble across a variegated one. Oh my God. I mean, that's pretty cool. And we did bring this back. So uh, fingers crossed we can get that established. That would be very cool. Right beside that, was this incredible Helleborus multifidus form. Pewter leaf. This was normal. Found about three of these in the wild, and that, that one of those did come back with us. Wow. Would the, can you imagine a pewter leaf hellebore with cut leaf foliage? <laughs> so heading to, yes, yeah, we did have some road issues sometimes. Uh, this, uh, the sheep were on their way to lunch, as were we. We wound up at this little roadside cafe. This is the sink for the restaurant. Is that like right out of a Jeff Foxworthy routine? You know you're a redneck when, when that's your kitchen sink. Uh, the food over there was actually quite good. Uh, overcooked, but quite good. They, the Balkans have a thing. You know, it doesn't matter how you order your meat, rare, medium rare, it's all very well done. Uh, just, a, just a thing they have. Uh, next stop was an incredible site. We, we stopped for the uh, asbestos. Uh, we're up about 3,500 feet now. And we not only saw it, but we looked behind it and we thought, well, that looks like an interesting area. I always like rock outcrop. So, so we started looking in amongst this rock outcrop. And oh my God, here's more hellebores. There's a little aurelia. There's pulmonarias. So we walked through more acerum europeum. 
these cute little ferns, some sort of little uh, ethereum maybe. A euphorbia, I think, is rabia, which is really exciting me because I love euphorbia rabia. We did bring this back, and I think we've got this established. Galanthus. Galanthus regine olge. It's absolutely <coughs> cool to finally see Galanthus in the wild, and we would see many more after this. And these were in seed, and we were able to gather seed. You can't gather bulbs because that's a cites uh, plant. And arums. Oh, my God. Here's a second arum. This is arum maculatum in bloom. Very excited. And uh, Tom had heard, or he had been to another site, not this site, in the area that contained a plant that we found at this site. This is the very rare Arum longus fathom. According to Peter Boyce, who wrote the Arum monograph, this has not been in cultivation in over a hundred years, as he's been able to determine. It is now. We were able to get this and bring that back and found it in flower. It was just, and when I got back, it was like email, you know, is this it? And he's like, that's it. You found it. So that's pretty exciting to have moments like that. Love this guy. He was growing right along the Arum. And we kept hearing this sound. And when you're botanizing, you don't like to hear sounds. <laughs> <laughs> These guys were everywhere. This is a Balkan green lizard. And they're about 18 inches long. I mean, this is not a little bitty lizard, but very cute. I mean, would that not make a cool pet? He's just a very beautiful. And, and again, I, I took a couple butterfly pictures because they were actually very beautiful. And as we walked on through the area, this incredible bank was just solid time. I uh, don't know the species, but what an amazing. And then Euphorbia myrsonides growing out of the time. Just amazing. Again, there's two plants that we certainly know. A little globularia, which I had assumed I could not grow globularis, but after seeing them with these plants, this should be a good one to, to grow. Uh, heading further up, uh, we stopped at this field. Tom said, I was here earlier in the year, and we got out and looked. This is an entire field of Narcissus poeticus. Oh, my goodness. Tom said he had seen it in full bloom. We only found the occasional one still in. We did gather a lot of seed. But can you imagine to find like five acres of Narcissus poeticus? Oh, my goodness. What an incredible thing. Heading further south, now we're trying to, now we're, since we didn't go to our last night's destination, we stayed in Mostar, which is about an hour from this town called Trebinjay, which is where we're headed. We had took this long detour to get there. So we're heading now back south. And this is a site Tom knew about. We walked in, these incredible Carpinus in bloom, but underneath them, this field. And as we walked in, Helleborus multifidus hurts the Gavinus for the first time. Unbelievable. This, this, is like, this is like going to Mecca. I mean, you sort of want to fall down and go, Allah. Uh, what incredible textures. And just every plant was so different. It's just every time you think you found the best one, then you turn, and then the next one's like, oh my God, this is the best one. It's just, just absolutely unbelievable. And then, uh, again, left that site. We were able to get seed. So actually, our seed are up. We got very good seed from, from that site. And one final site for the day was just this wonderful, rocky, is low area. This is hot. This is bacon hot. A uh, little oryngium as we're going in. Saw this peredia, which... Tom had tried to find seed for years. This is a tree lagoon. It's an eight foot tall tree covered in yellow flowers in these incredible pods. And we were able to get seed of this for the first time. More of that little uh, ceterac, a fern, and look at the hellebores there. Does that look like a hellebore? I mean, that is just too bloody cool. Great seed set at this site. And then ending up at our little town for the night of Trebinjay, a fascinating, oh my God, gorgeous town. Very much a, a town of nightlife. They're having a, a motorcycle convention, evidently. But this whole squares was just amazing. And just at night, tens of thousands of kids. Every, I mean, 20s and 30s. This is just sort of a gathering area for kids. Now, where all the, the countries in the Balkans don't allow smoking inside or in restaurants, except for Bosnia. They have not got the memo. <laughs> Everybody there smokes, uh, inside, outside, no matter where. But what? I mean, well, what a delightful town, isn't it? I mean, you just get the feel, and then night, it just everything became alive there. Uh, the next day, off we are into Montenegro for our fourth country. 
So we're heading west again. Uh, beautiful scenery as we're, we're heading in there. This is just inside the stop. I thought Tom stopped too close to the, uh, the border, but uh, they didn't seem to bother us. This is Salvia officinalis, a plant that we've all grown. Uh, the, the sage of, of the herbal sage. There it is in the wild. With again, the sedum, that's sedum acre at the top, which we all grow, and sedum hispanicum. And just coming down the hill, more hellebores. So here we are looking, uh, this is sort of a typical habitat of where we'd be gathering seed, and there were very good seed here. This incredible ajuga, ajuga genovensis, 18 inch tall flower spikes. I'm not a big ajuga guy, but this was impressive, and we did bring this back, and that's established very well so far. Lovely scutellaria. It looks like something out of an American forest. And then here's the Helleborus multifugus herzegovinus again with the Euphorbia sapiris, which is a plant, you know, I grew years ago, except it got too weedy. But damn, is it beautiful. I mean, look at that. Is that just incredible? I wish it was clumping instead of running. That's a hell of a plant. And just look at the Helleborus again. Just, just every one was just just unimaginable. In sun as well as here in shade. And here we are. This is the first time I've seen any variation on that fern, that cedarac. Look at the difference. Side by side, a small one and a giant one. That was incredibly cool. Geranium sanguinium growing in the woods with the ferns and with the hellebores. Look at that. Look at this variation. Look at, look at that one. That's like threads. Oh my God. Incredible. Look at that. I have a division of this. <laughs> oh, man. Man, it was just, I like to say, it just, you got to the point, you after you've dug four or five, you're like, just, you just quit looking because they're just, you know you're going to find one that you think is better. It's just incredible. And just there's again an example of the seed. Seed have not fallen yet, so we just gather those seeds, put them in a bag, put them on the dash of the truck, and after about a day, they just fall right out. So really, really easy. This, this was amazing to me. That's the hellebores growing with sedum spectabili, like a sedum autumn joy. In the shade. We always saw the sedum in the shade. We never saw it in sun. So I'm having to totally rethink everything I knew about plant associations. We're coming back out. We stopped this little cafe in Montenegro for lunch. and it, We've been real lucky about currency because each place uses different currency. You know, you've got the Croatian currency and the Bosnian currency and the Euro currency, and everybody, every place you stop took something different. So we get in here, we, we finished our lunch, and we hand them our credit cards. Oh, mm. Oh, well, how about this currency? Mm. And this currency? Mm. This currency? Mm. Euros. Tom's like, damn, I spent all my euros yesterday. Oh, must have euros. So Tom had to leave us there as hostage while he went and found an ATM in the town 30 minutes away to get some damn euros. Now that was an experience. Uh, but we were able to find this incredible botanizing area out back of the hotel with just an amazing array of things. I found my first clumps of Idrianthus graminifolius. I have never tried this, but I've, I've got seeds of this coming in. That should grow really well. A wonderful drop for his palette, a fern that I collected in Crete that has done real well. And again, just, this is a World War II memorial. We see a lot of those as well in the area. Uh, they, they really uh, really want to represent the losses there. It's incredible fern right behind that memorial of Queen Anne's Lace. Oh, man. What a, just, that was one of the things you had to see to believe. Just incredible. And then we're heading over now. Uh, the farthest we're going into Montenegro for our night in a little town called Kolesin. Just incredible coming by the, the lakes there. So we're now at our highest elevation of the entire trip. We're over 5,000 foot. We're in, this is cold as a mother up here. I mean, this stuff is just now waking up. And so we're in June. So we see things again we hadn't seen before up under the, uh, under the uh, uh, beech trees. Some of the early, early uh, anemones that we had missed earlier in full flower here. This incredible lambium, which I really, really like. That's a Solomon seal. That's Polygonatum uh, uh, 
verticillatum. This is a very disjunct population that Tom had actually found a year earlier, sent to a friend of ours here in Flood, who's doing his PhD on this. And all exciting because it's a very different form, could wind up even being a new species. So that was neat to see. Again, some amazing ferns up here, probably can't grow them. We're coming back down, and we got flagged down. We're way up on the mountain. These guys had uh, did not have the best van to begin with. And it had sort of uh, had some issues, and they didn't have a jack. Well, it's illegal to be in Montenegro without a jack. We learned that in our <laughs> little book that we read while we lent them their jack. So they were just thrilled as could be to, uh, to have some help to get their vehicle jacked up because they, they got everything up to them, but they couldn't get it ready uh, without us. And then ending up at the day, uh, at a wonderful site that this is where the original double hellebore was found. This is the one called, I believe, Dido, uh, found by Elizabeth Stragman of uh, England. And we stopped there, and you know, Tom's like, this top secret site, you can't tell anybody about this. So I walked out here, I said, did she find these variegated ones when she was here? <laughs> and we found this wonderful patch of variegated leaf uh, torquatus. So that's pretty exciting. We did bring a piece of this uh, back. And, it's looking uh, very good so far. The weird thing, we got to a hotel at night. Tom had checked the reservations right before we left. We get to the hotel, there's nobody there. There's a sign on, it's closed. Tom's like, wait a minute. He pulls out his reservation. We've got a reservation. And this guy walks up and said, oh, closed for renovation. <laughs> what? When did you decide to do this? So fortunately, he sent us down the road. We wound up in a wonderful little place. This was the little parking lot out front. They were obviously having a hell of a trip. Uh, mm -hmm. Delicious, delicious uh, dinner uh, at the hotel. Last day, and this is sort of a quickie, up in the mountains again, pretty high elevation, 4,000 feet for one last stop. Tom was looking for a, another Galanthus up there, which we were unable to find, but found this, uh, again, incredible fern in this <laughs> lily. This is Lilium pyrenaicum carnolicum Bosniacum. <laughs> That's a hell of a mouthful. Um, but uh, I think Hans was able to get a piece off one of these because he knew it uh, well. I had never grown it before, but really, really nice little lily. From there, it's heading south, and we had a uh, about a nine-hour drive. And again, this is where Tom got one of his speeding tickets, driving like an absolute maniac. By this time, Hans is completely sick. His stomach is all in knots because he doesn't deal well with you know, hairpin curves at 70 miles an hour flying down a hill. The, as we got toward the bottom, it's just, a, the scenery is amazing coming down from Montenegro uh, back down into the bottom of Croatia, just as we, just incredible flying down the mountain. Only stop was right when we got to the bottom and I screamed, I can't the spinosis! <laughs> this, this plant, I'm just, this is incredible because I'm fascinated with this plant because everything in the trade commercially anywhere in the world is wrong. It's all, the first one I showed, Hungaricus. Spinosis is really easy to distinguish because it has spines. <laughs> A lot of them. <laughs> so, we actually did stop and get pieces off this. I do hope they survive. There's it in flower, really. Uh, amazing thing and then winding up at our hotel for the day now, Tom has figured okay we're gonna need a nice place to process well he got this nice hotel didn't bother to check the price because <laughs> again Tom's blowing through money it doesn't really matter to him <laughs> this was not a cheap hotel this is nice this is the Radisson Blue Hotel if you ever have got money's not a problem and you're in Dubrovnik Croatia <laughs> it's an incredible hotel I will warn you <clears throat> If you're with somebody who is not your spouse, check out the room first. Because we went to, we asked for double beds, because Hans and I were rooming together, and you go in, and the double beds are together. They just have two different covers. <laughs> and we went down and had to explain them. I'm sorry, this is not a double bed. Double bed means they're not together. You know, so finally they sent us in another room, we go in there, okay, the beds are a foot apart. <laughs> Thanks, guys. But the bathroom, which is right next door, has a glass wall <laughs> and a sheer curtain over it. <laughs> okay, you guys got a great sense of humor over here in Croatia. <laughs> Maybe in the honeymoon suite, but I'm sorry, that's not the room for double beds. But uh, 
we were able to get everything processed because we were not able to do FIDOs in the in these countries everything had to be flown back to Tom's nursery in England where he had to go through the whole FIDO thing there and so unfortunately Tom had forgot to get his nursery inspection so that took almost a month of my plant sitting in the refrigerator at his nursery which was not particularly good and then he was so upset with screwing up he put them in a styrofoam box which happened to arrive in Raleigh when it was 95 degrees. Oh. So we did have much higher losses than we would normally have on a trip, but fortunately we did make it back with a lot, and I hope you'll be able to see a lot of those in the next few years. Thank you. Thank you.